Um, John, can you tell us how this event came to be in Froome? Uh, Unlock Democracy had uh, one of their Magna Carta events, which is a whole series of events, in Cambridge about four or five months ago. And I spoke at it, and a lot of questions came up about democracy and participation and the extent to which politics as usual is being challenged. And I said repeatedly, I said, well, I come from this town in Somerset. It's where I live. It's my adopted home, you know. And there's all sorts of interesting stuff going on there. And people there seem quite interested in that, and quite sort of energised about what I had to say about it. And I spoke to the organiser of the event, and I said, why don't we do one of these in Froome, you know? And so I talked with them for quite a while about making it happen. And the third party in that conversation was Peter McFadden from Froome, who's a town councillor, he's now the leader of the town council here, who uh, has this whole model of how you take over your town council, you know, which is grassroots democracy in action. And I said, let's base it around that, you know. And the whole thing, you know, came to fruition, it all happened. And lo and behold, here today we've got 300 people who've come from Froome, but also from all over the country, you know, they've come from not just Gloucester and Bristol and Bath and places in the southwest, they've come from Yorkshire and Lancashire and Cheshire and Devon and Cornwall further south. So it's amazing, you know, the response to it has been better than I ever I thought it would be. It's so, been amazing. So how do you feel the day went and um, what lessons have you drawn from it or what have you got, what have you drawn from it and full stop? Well, the lesson you draw from it is there's a huge appetite for talking about politics and not politics in the sense of, you know, David Cameron versus Jeremy Corbyn, now it is, or, you know, uh, Alex Salmon in Scotland, or these people in suits who you see on the television. But politics in a very visceral, real sense, how people live, you know, what's, what's happening in their towns and cities and villages, and all of that, you know, what's the nature of power, how do you take it back, how do you level the playing field a bit, all of that. People want to talk about that stuff, uh, and it's amazing to see. You don't get that many opportunities to do it. But more and more and more, these sort of gatherings are happening. You know, I saw them happen in Scotland during the independence campaign, the referendum, and now they're starting to happen in England. And it's just really, really inspiring. What a wonderful thing. You know, you sit in a group of 15 or 20 people and you say, well, let's talk about changing the electoral system or how we treat refugees or whatever it is. And all this stuff happens, you know. It's great. What's, what's going to happen after today's over? For all, of these people, all of these people have come from all over the country to talk about where they live, how it relates to politics, and how you make change happen. So you're not going to put that back in its box. And because we've got social media now, everybody stays in touch, and it's the start of a process. And I don't know where it's going to go, but whatever happens, it'll be exciting, it'll be inspiring, and it will change things. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah. You know, what advice would you give to, to somebody who's in a town, they're frustrated with the local uh, uh, political management of yeah. this, um, what, what advice would you give them? What's the first thing they should do? The first thing someone in a town, village or city neighbourhood who wants to take power back should do is understand that you can do it. You know, they probably didn't realise what they were letting loose, but uh, the coalition government, the Tories chiefly, we're very into this idea of localism and they authored this thing in the localism act and if you're clever about it what it what it provides is a chance to have all sorts of powers and capabilities that you didn't have before and suddenly you can do things that's what's happened in Froome it's starting to happen in Devon and Cheshire and Lancashire and all these places so you can do it you have to kind of read up on it you have to read the book of flat pack democracy you know you have to talk to other people in the same position but you can do it and what you'll find then is that suddenly things that you thought should be left to people in suits and bureaucrats you can do so do we have david cameron to thank for this it's the only silver lining on the tory cloud and that feels weird saying that you know because of austerity and everything else do you think he actually thought this was going to happen no i don't know you know Froome's is one of the few towns that's really tried to do something with it but i think belatedly because it was quite a while ago the localism act was passed belatedly now the possibilities are occurring to people you know and the possibilities are really really exciting and actually it's a way of avoiding some of the worst effects of what the tory government's up to they didn't know you know they created a monster probably but it's a brilliant thing that it's there but it's nothing unless people get involved you know that's what localism is you know it's not some little some absolute abstract idea. It, it only works if sizable numbers of people where they live become part of the process and Froome's the kind of town where that happens, you know. We have all sorts of campaigns and hundreds of people get involved. You know, how many other towns of 25,000 population would you get 300 people to talk about politics all afternoon when the sun was shining? That's what's great about Froome. How do you think it's going to look in 2016? 
uh, 2019, you know, when the next general election, do you think we can make a, a, cha a, a, a sea change in, in the way people think about politics by then? Nobody knows anything anymore. If you'd have said to me or anybody else 20 years ago, Scotland would be on the verge of going independent, the Labour Party would be wiped out, you'd have said, are you serious? If you'd have said, look, there'll be a party called the UK Independence Party, it will get four million votes in a general election, or that the Green Party will get one and a half million votes, right? Or that someone from the fringes of the Labour Party would get 59% of the poll in a leadership election. Although all over Europe, new parties are rising and doing things nobody expected. Nobody knows anything anymore, least of all me, right? So I don't know what Britain politically is going to look like in 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. I only know that the sort of spirit you get happening here suggests to me that a lot of what goes on will be really exciting. So all bets are off. All bets are off. And how great is that, you know?